In this video, I'm gonna show you how to verify your Shopify domain for the iOS 14 update in regards to Facebook advertising. Also, I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough on how you should be prioritizing your events within Facebook's event manager. Welcome back to Market and Hustle where we simplify marketing so that you can accelerate your business growth. So the first thing on our agenda is we are going to verify our domain, our Shopify domain within Facebook Ads Manager, and then I'm gonna show you how you can prioritize your events, and we'll talk about which ones you should be prioritizing. Also, make sure if you haven't already, download our Facebook video ads cheat sheet. I'm gonna give you guys a link to that at the end of the video, but if you're doing any kind of e-com advertising, you're gonna definitely benefit from some of the tactics and insights within that cheat sheet. So the first thing you're going to do is if you're in your Facebook ads manager, you actually want to go to your business tools and you want to go to your event manager. And this is where we're going to get the information that we need to verify our domain. So you're going to select which pixel uh, in particular. I'm selecting here my Shopify pixel. Now I've, I've already done this process, but I can still walk you through it. And once you're on this screen, you're going to want to click on where it says aggregated event measurement. That's the new protocol that Facebook created in response to Apple's private click protocol. And you're gonna click on configure web events. So the first part is to verify your domain. Now, a lot of people are asking, well, what if I have a custom domain? Do I need to verify my Shopify domain and my uh, custom domain? I actually verified both just in case because the documentation and the information from Shopify didn't really confirm. So I was just like, okay, what the heck? I'll just do both. So I'll just walk you through my custom domain and it's the exact same process for the other one. So the first part is you need to go and actually tell uh, your, your, your Facebook business manager what is the domain you wanna add. So you would come in here and you would type in, let me just, I'm gonna make, actually I'm not gonna make up a domain. This is actually a domain I have. So you type in your domain and of course, Facebook's gonna say, hey, um, you know, they're gonna create this little tab for you and they're gonna give you these three different ways that you can verify. You can do what's called meta tag verification where you just copy this code on the HTML section of the Shopify website. You can upload a file or you can do DNS verification. I would recommend starting with meta tag verification. This is probably gonna be the easiest one and that's what we're gonna do in this example. Now I've already verified uh, my Shopify website but I will still walk you through that process. So essentially what I, I did first is when I came here, I copied this piece of code and then I went to my Shopify website and all you have to do is once you're in the admin section, just type in domain in the search tab and you'll see it's, it'll say Shopify admin domains manager website and this will give you a shortcut right to um, where all your domains are. So I am going to Again, there's the custom domain and then there's the Shopify managed domain. You could do this process for both of them. And as you can see, if I go back into this tab, you can see I verified the Shopify one and my markethustledigital.com, which is the custom one. So I took that piece of code that you, you can't see here, but I'm showing you in this example, the code right here. And all I did was I went to my Shopify theme and I went to edit code. So I'm using the debut theme. You might be using a different one, but it should show up here as a live theme. And all you have to do is come here to edit code. And this is gonna load what might look like the matrix to you if you're not familiar with this. Um, but what you wanna do is basically find the header section of the website, which should be under the layout folder under theme liquid. So if I click on theme liquid, as you can see here, it says head and this is going to guarantee that this piece of code lives on all the pages within the website. This is also the section of the website where you would post, post your Google Tag Manager code that would have your Facebook tracking codes and your Google Analytics codes. So you might already be familiar with this section. So then you would take that piece of code from here, right? And all you'd have to do is just come and paste it right here. And as you've noticed, I already have both of those codes here. I have one for my custom domain and I have one for my Shopify domain. So after you do that, all you do is you come back here and you click verify. Now, obviously 
in this example I'm giving you, it's not zarenstudio.com. I'm I'm on my Shopify website, so I've already verified it. But basically, after you click verify, it's going to take you to this screen, and now you can give access to whoever needs to have access and, and connect it to whatever um, page that you need to connect it to. So that is basically the first part. It's literally you come in here, you add your domain, or you could do it from the events manager. You'll also get the option here. And uh, you just take that piece of code and that's it. It's as simple as that. Some people might want to do DNS verification. So if you have a GoDaddy account, you can go to GoDaddy.com and basically copy this text record into your, your DNS. Um, meta tag verification, I feel, I feel like it's the easiest one. So that's the first step. First step is creating that. Then what you're going to do is after that is that you need to prioritize your events. So let me show you what that looks like. Now you have eight events that you can prioritize, right? And the idea here is that once Apple's ATT privacy prompt is enforced, they're going to limit the amount of information that's coming through. Before you can you could get all kinds of information from the website. Now there's going to be a limit to eight events. The most important being if you're running an e-com website is purchase. Purchasers should be the first thing here. So you just want to come in here, select the pixel and then select the event, which in this case is purchase. Um, mind you, I just re redid my Shopify pixel. So it's saying there's no event data, but don't pay attention to that. Now the next, the chronological order of this should be the process someone goes through to buy from your website. So if you think about it, view content, they land on your website, right? They look at a product page, that product page should be tagged with view content. Uh, once they add to cart, that page should be tagged with an add to cart uh, code. Once they initiate checkout, that page should then signal uh, that, they, that they're initiating checkout. So I'll give you an example of my flow with the Market and Hustle website so you can see what that looks like. So if someone landed here, this would be view content. Like my view content script would, sh would fire here. Then when I add to cart, now um, if I open the Facebook Pixel Helper on Chrome, you should see I added to cart. Then when someone clicks check out, then here we go, it's gonna have it. Boom, initiate checkout should fire. And then once someone purchases on the thank you page, the purchase pixel fires. So that's kind of what my flow looks like. And that's why purchase is number one, then initiate checkout, add to cart, view content. Now, if you have other activity you're tracking, you could track up to eight events. However, however, Facebook just released an update saying that if you want in, in your Facebook ads manager to see your ROAS, your ROI for your ads, they're going to require four spaces, four events. Um, so I would recommend for you to use four events to capture your purchase, initiate checkout, add to cart and view content, and then leave the next four events open so that Facebook can capture uh, revenue performance and report it within your Facebook ads campaign. So this is what a configuration should generally for most people doing e-com with Shopify look like. I know this iOS situation has been challenging, but hopefully this video helps you get one step closer. And in that vein, make sure to download our Facebook video ads cheat sheet to continue to accelerate your e-com performance. There's some great examples of, of elements of high performing um, ads that you can emulate in your creative. You can just grab the link in the description and download that today. It's absolutely free. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.